Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving Leech Code Problem 2246, Longest Path with Different Adjacent Characters. Before we get into the question, just a reminder, leave a like and a comment. Helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm, you guys have no idea. Also, join the Discord community, link is in the description below. Alright, you are given a tree, i.e. a connected, undirected graph that has no cycles, rooted at node 0, consisting of n nodes numbered from 0 to n minus 1. The tree is represented by a 0 indexed array parent of size n, where parent of i is the parent of node i. Since node 0 is the root, parent of 0 equals negative 1. You are also given a string s of length n, where s of n is the character assigned to the ith node. Return the length of the longest path in the tree, such that no pair of adjacent nodes on the path have the same character assigned to them. So let's look uh, at this. So basically, we just want to find the longest path, right? And the stipulation is that two nodes next to each other cannot have the same character, right? So for example, we could not use you know, the, the path from 4 to 1 because both of them have B, right? So what we could do, uh, we could go, you know, C to B because that's fine. And then from there, so that would be of length, um, I guess, 2, right? Because we go, this is 1, this is 2, so that's a length of 2 because C does not equal B does not equal A. Or, oh, why does my pen keep disappearing? We could go E to A, but we can't do that. Um, why? Because obviously A um, is the same as this A here. So we could not take this path. So our best path here is from C to B to A. And I think they're actually defining path size here as the number of nodes on the path, not the actual edges. So our path length would actually be three here. So we'd go from C to B to A, and that is kind of our path. So on paper, this question is really easy to solve, but there's just a little bit of, um, you know, caution we have to do to actually solve this with code, but it's basically just a straightforward depth for a search. So let's kind of just erase all of this text here and just go through how we actually want to solve this problem. And I'll walk you through the intuition. So what we can do here is we need to basically build the graph, right? Because we're given our data structure in the form of a list. So the first thing that we need to do is actually build the graph. So we're going to build the graph. And we can easily do this by just iterating over kind of the lists we've been given. And then for each, you know, uh, parent node, then we have a list of all the children. Um, and that's how we would basically build a graph. So the first thing we need to do is just build this graph. The second thing we need to do is actually run the DFS. So what we want to do at any node, uh, basically, we want to know the longest path on the left. And we want to know the longest path on the right or you know it could be the case that we actually have more than two children right so it's not necessarily that we'll just have left and right we could actually have an nra tree here right it's not guaranteed that it's binary even though the example is we could actually have multiple children nodes so we want to actually loop uh over the children children and then find the length right of their longest path uh, you know, which starts at the child. So find length. So that's basically what the DFS function is going to return. It's going to return the length of the uh, longest path, right? So find length, right? So for each child, we're basically going to find the length and we're going to keep track of the longest length, longest, and the second longest. And the reason that we want to do this is because obviously we need to form a path and we can only take two things, right? So we need to take our current node and we need to take some path, uh, you know, from the left, or I guess we no longer have the concept of a left because it could be an NRA tree. Uh, we just need to have two paths, right? So we're going to take whatever the two longest paths are, connect them, and that becomes our temporary solution. It's not guaranteed that this path that we make is actually going to be the longest one. So we're going to have some variable to basically keep track of our answer, right? So our new answer will become the maximum of whatever the current answer is and whatever the longest path is. So we'll do this as longest plus second longest plus one, obviously, because we're adding the root node where we currently are. And this will be our global maximum 
then obviously we cannot take two paths and go up the tree so we basically just need to do we need to just take whatever the longest path is so to the next level we'll simply return the longest plus one because we take whatever the longest path is so far plus one because we're adding this new root node uh, as long as it's not actually the same node as our previous uh, child so we do need to be careful that whenever we take a path we actually have to make sure that it's not um, you know equal right we cannot have two characters so we'll actually double check for all of our children we're gonna make sure that the current uh, char doesn't actually equal um, the you know child right because if it equals then we can't actually take that pass because remember we're not allowed adjacent characters so that's really all we have to do and you know we're gonna do our DFS here build all the possible paths compare them against the maximum answer uh, that we have so far and when our DFS finishes we'll have our answer in answer so that's really all we have to do conceptually this is how we're going to solve it let's actually go to the code editor now and write this out again it's not that complicated i don't really know why this is a hard level question this is a pretty straightforward depth first search to me so let's go to the code editor and type this up okay we are back in the code editor let's type this up remember that we actually need a graph here so let's define that data structure so we're going to say graph equals default dict and we're going to pass in a list now what we need to do is actually build our graph here. So we're going to say for i parent in enumerate um, parent, we're going to say, OK, graph of the parent is we're going to append i here. And that will build our graph. So the key will be the parent and the values will be all of its children, right? So these i uh, indexes. So now what we need to do is actually define a variable to store our results. So we're going to say answer equals one. And the reason it's one is because we know that our tree is non empty. And in the case that there's only one value, the root, that's just the path length of length one. So it's just uh, one here. So we're going to set our answer to one and we're going to define our DFS function. So we're going to pass in a node here. And since uh, we need to access this variable answer, we're actually going to have to say non-local ands uh, just so we have it within scope here. So we now have uh, the variable. Now what we need to do is remember we need the longest and we need the second longest. So we're going to say longest equals second longest equals zero because obviously we haven't processed anything yet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say for child in graph of node so basically we're going to go through all the children we're going to basically get all of their path lengths so path length equals dfs and we're going to call it on the child node and now what we need to do is actually make sure that the child node uh, its string value is not the same as our current nodes value because remember we can't have two characters with uh, that are adjacent that have the same character so we need to make, double check that so we're going to say it oh sorry uh, if s so remember that's the string uh, where the ith index represents whatever character is uh, for that you know ith index the ith node uh, if s of child actually doesn't equal to s of node then we're good to go we can actually proceed forward so once we make that check we're going to say if the path length is actually longer than our longest path length then the new second longest becomes the old longest and now the new longest equals to our path length otherwise if the path length is actually greater than the uh, second longest but not greater than the longest then we can just update just the second longest so that will basically be updating our paths once this for loop finishes we'll have gone through all of our children uh, and basically figured out what the best path lengths are and we'll have stored them in our longest and second longest variables now we need to actually update our global maximum answer. So uh, just fix the indenting here. So our answer is going to be the maximum of whatever answer we have so far and longest plus second longest plus one, because obviously we take this, the longest path, the second longest path, and the plus one represents the node that we're currently at. Cool. So once we've done that, all we need to do is simply return longest plus one so we can continue and go higher up in the tree and that's the DFS function now all we need to do is simply call DFS 
on the zeroth node. And the reason we call it on zero is because that's where they've told us the root of the tree is. It's always going to be the index with value zero. So we can just call it on a zero here because that represents our root. So all we need to do now is just return our answer and we are done. So if I can just find my submit button, just want to make sure we haven't made any syntax bugs. Looks all right. And let's submit it. And once this submits, we are good to go. Cool. Solution accepted. So let us think about what the time and space complexity of our algorithm here is. So for the time complexity, uh, let's think about this. So we are basically just doing a DFS through our tree, right? This is going to be a bottom up. So we basically go to the bottom and then pass the tree uh, values up, uh, the lengths up, and we're only touching every node uh, once. So this is going to be a big O of N in the time because all we do is we just traverse the entire tree and we touch every single node. So that's going to be a big O of N on the time for the space. Um, it's going to be big O of N as well because we just simply need to build the graph. So the size of the graph will just be, you know, the number of, um, you know, these connections here. Obviously, it's, it's going to be a tree. So it's just going to be a big O of N where N is basically the size of the tree. So that is how you solve this problem. I don't think this is a hard level question. I really don't. I think this is more of a medium. Um, I don't know why leak code has marked it as hard, but it's really not that bad. Pretty straightforward. I mean, you have to build the graph, but we've done that in mediums and traversed it and it's still a medium. So I'm not sure where they're getting hard from this one, but whatever. It's it's a hard problem. Who cares? Uh, anyway, so if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. Like I said in the intro, you have no idea how much it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Please leave a like. You can comment whatever the hell you want. Just write algorithm or I don't care. Just as long as it's not inappropriate, comment whatever you want. Just smash your keyboard. Who cares? Um, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. If you want to join the discord I have set up for this YouTube channel, link will be in the description as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.